Hey, what's up, users? This is John at Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, we're going to recreate this website here. Um, I've called it a mobile app slash UX website uh, because I'm kind of showcasing uh, mobile devices and different apps on a mobile device. And I've created this to showcase uh, scroll effects with the Muse Motion 2 widget. Uh, so I'll go ahead and showcase the website. Um, if I scroll down, we have the cell phone here coming in from the left to the right. And I'll scroll down again. We have this one coming in from the right to the left. Scroll down again. We have this one coming in from the left to the right. Scroll down again. This one's coming in from the right to the left. And this one here is coming in from the left to the right. Okay, so that was done with the Muse Motion widget. And in the background here, I have the particles.js widget uh, to add more effects to the website. Um, and also for the menu, I'm using the responsive side menu widget. Uh, so if I hover my mouse over here and I hover over the icons, we have the menu here and I'm using the on scroll, the anchor point scrolling from the responsive side menu widget uh, to, to scroll to those different anchor points. So that looks good. And then here I'm using the font awesome uh, widget from museforyoushop.com as well. Uh, so before I begin, I'm just going to show you where you can access all of these widgets. Um, so if you go to museforyoushop.com and you click here on the pop-up, here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any, any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to use PayPal, you can also subscribe here with PayPal. Um, and if you'd like to purchase the widgets individually, you can do that as well. Uh, here I have the Muse Motion widget and to purchase individually, you just simply click add to cart uh, to purchase individually or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. So those are the widgets there and all the other widgets are in here as well. And you can take a look at those as well in the muse for you shop at museforyoushop.com. Um, so along with building this website with the widgets and showing you how to use the widgets and, and creating a site like this, um, I also want to showcase another great feature that I found because I did build a responsive version of this website and I know responsive is pretty big right now and so yeah so I decided to to create a responsive version of this website uh, but let's say you are building a responsive website and there's been a few maybe questions about what are good breakpoints or where should I add breakpoints um, in Safari if you have a if you're working on a Mac uh, Safari has this great uh, feature and I think it's fairly new because I don't think I've seen it before um, and if I enter in that website in Safari all right, here it is. And let me make this browser a little bit smaller, just like that. And if I scroll, we have those nice scroll effects. That looks good. And I have them scrolling when they get to the middle of the page. And I'll show you how to do that in this video tutorial. Uh, but let's say I'm designing a mobile site and I want to check how it looks on different devices. Um, in Safari, they have this, this new feature or I mean, it's, it's new for me that I just kind of stumbled across it and I thought it was amazing. Um, it's this enter responsive design mode. And if I click there, we have all these different uh, devices. We have desktop, we have iPads, we have iPhone, and yeah, an iPhone. Now this is Safari, so it's kind of tailored to the iOS uh, operating system and the devices, but it can give you a pretty good idea for other devices as well, um, because Android phones are not too different in size. Uh, some are different, but this will give you an idea for, for really great breakpoints that you can add to your website. So we have uh, the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, iPad Mini 4, iPad Air 2, iPad Pro, 800 by 600, 1366 by 768, and 920 by 1080. Um, and you can even go to the different um, operating systems and check out how they work on the different operating systems. Uh, so I have an iPhone 5S here uh, because I actually have an iPhone 5S, so I wanna test it and see how it looks on the 5S. So here's the mobile site on the 5S, and I've created this in Adobe Muse with the responsive breakpoints. Okay, now the, oh, okay, so never mind. <laughs> um, I think before when I was working, I couldn't trigger certain things, but yeah, I can trigger the the uh, menu there. And this is exactly how it will look on my iPhone 5S. And I actually have my iPhone 5S right here. Okay, and here's the website. So if I scroll through, it's exactly how it looks on this preview here. 
and I have the particles.js in the background, um, which doesn't show here on this website, but it is, it is uh, here on my mobile device. So I have the particles in the background and I have the different elements there. Okay, and I'll scroll up and then for the menu, I'll click the responsive side menu and there's the menu. If I click on an area and then click out, it does go to that section. All right, looks good. I'll go back home and there we go and easy login. All right, looks good. So I'll go all the way to the top. All right, so I just wanted to showcase that. Um, it is a great feature and I'll be using it myself when designing responsive websites. And it tells you the different breakpoints. So as we can see, probably on breakpoint uh, 375, around 380, um, I could design another site because it doesn't look that great. Um, but because I just wanted to showcase the desktop version and the iPhone version, I just created a 320 breakpoint for the iPhone 5S and um, the desktop. Uh, version which is 960 uh, there's a breakpoint at 960 all right so looks good so we have a lot of fun things to play with in this video tutorial um, I'm gonna try to go through this fairly quickly um, but I do want to kind of go over as much information as I can to help you build really great websites in Adobe Muse um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, so here I have this website here we can see the widgets um, so what I'm gonna do is start a new site so I'll go to file new site and I'll click OK and I'll double click on the home page here um, and then I'll go to my images folder and here I have the images I got these from Dollar Photo Club so on April 15th Dollar Photo Club will be Adobe stock it's gonna completely transition to Adobe stock and if you did have the Dollar Photo Club before um, I do think you get some benefits there uh, when transitioning to Adobe stock. Uh, so you might just want to check out um, if you have Dollar Photo Club, just check that out. And um, they did give kind of like an email or a message in, in the account when I signed in saying that on April 15th, um, it's going to completely transition, but you get like benefits for a year um, in Adobe stock. I think it's like a reduced price for the year. Uh, but yeah, just check that out if you, if you do have Dollar Photo Club. Um, so I did get these images from there. So here I have a few different images. I have a few different cell phone images just like that. So what I'm going to do is drop these images into Adobe Muse. Uh, so I'm just going to select all of these and I'm going to click, hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of space them out a little bit. So it looks good. And I'm just going to create the layout real quick um, before I start adding any widgets or any effects. Okay, and a nice little tip, um, if you want to position things uh, or align things evenly between each other, um, you can go and drag the last element um, to the bottom of the page. And then you can select all of the elements and go to align. And then for align two, you can say selection. And then here in distribute spacing, you can vertically distribute the space. So I'll click there and we can see that now there's even space between all of these elements. So I'll just bring this down here. Okay, and let me zoom out a little bit. You can zoom out with command minus. All right, and I'll create a rectangle. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'll create a rectangle up here and I'll fill, let me make the rectangle uh, 400 pixels in height. And I'll go to fill, add image, and I'll select this image here. I'll say scale to fill and I'll position it in the center. Okay, and I got this image actually from this uh, image here. They are Illustrator files, so I was able to make this background image um, of this phone uh, a bit larger and just put it here at the top. So the next thing I did, or actually I did this as I was building, uh, but I'll do it now, is that I sampled the colors from this top uh, bar here or this top image so that we could give the website kind of a color theme. Um, so let me zoom in a little bit and bring this to the top. And to sample these colors, what I'll do is click kind of in this outside gray area and I'll go to browser fill. I'll click the drop down. I'll select the sample color uh, tool here and I'll click here. I'll sample this blue color and then I'll click on this icon here that says add swatch. Kind of looks like a piece of paper kind of with the folded corner 
and I'll click OK. Then um, let me zoom in a little bit more, just like that. Click the drop down, sample color. I'll sample this light blue here. Add the swatch. I'll sample this purple here. Add the swatch. And I'll sample this blue here and add the swatch. Okay. And I'll revert it back to this blue. So now the website is blue. I kind of like that color. And I'll move all these elements up a little bit. Okay. Looks good. All right, so now what I want to do is add a title here. Um, I'll title it mobile app uh, slash UX, which stands for user experience. Um, and um, along that note, um, Adobe, Adobe just came out with a program called Adobe Experience Design, which allows you to kind of design your user experience before you start actually implementing it into, let's say, a website or a program, uh, you have a program. So that just kind of inspired me to come up with a website like this. Uh, so yeah, I'll create some text and I'll call this mobile app slash UX. Okay, and then I'll change the font here. Um, I'll use this Nord font. I'll say 72 or maybe 60. Uh, and I'll make this white here. All right, looks good. And we'll put that right there. And I'm going to bring in the font smoother because I like to see my fonts really smooth um, while I'm developing. All right, so I'll put that in there. And looks good. So yeah, I just typed in font smoother in the library panel. Uh, if you don't see your library panel, you can just go to window and click on library and that'll bring up the library panel. Okay, so we have that there. Um, the next thing I want to do is just bring in kind of some dummy text from the web. So I'll go to Safari here um, and I'll type in lorem ipsum and I'll go to lorem ipsum generator. Okay. And here I'll click on generate lorem ipsum and I'll just grab this first paragraph here and I'll paste that in there and it looks good. I'll change the font here to Carm. Um, it's just a font name there. And I'll change the color to white right there. And maybe 18 for the size. All right, that looks good. Okay, and then I'm going to add in another text. And I'm going to say, like, easy access. Ax yeah, access. And I'll say Carm. And we'll make this maybe 24 or yeah, 36 and make it white right there. All right, so we'll put that right there. It looks good. Let me just see what I named these other sections. All right, look, I'll do kind of the same thing. So we'll say do more, um, and then I'll copy and paste this. Or actually what I'll do is just copy and paste both of these sections, bring them down here, and I'll say easy access just like that or easy login multiple accounts easy login copy and paste bring this down here and I'll say multiple accounts let me make this text box a bit bigger say multiple accounts and I'll paste again and right there uh, easy access touch enabled okay so this one's easy easy access and then the last one here is touch enabled okay so this could be great if you're showcasing like a mobile app or any idea where you want to kind of showcase information. All right, so that looks good. We have our layout. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in the Muse Motion widget. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna go to my library panel and I'm gonna scroll down to the Muse Motion uh, 2 widget. Okay, so I have it here, Muse Motion 2, and this is just gonna be a 2D transformation because we're just gonna have it uh, translate on the X axis. Uh, so the first thing we wanna do is bring in the Add First widget. Uh, and place it at the top of our, of our website. So I'll place it at the very top. And then I'll bring in the 2D transformations 
uh, widget here from Muse Motion 2. Okay, so there we have the widgets. And actually, before we start assigning widget options, what we want to do is assign graphic styles to each of these elements or these images. So I'll click on the first one here and I'll go to my graphic styles panel. Uh, if you don't see your graphic styles panel, you can just go to window and click on graphic styles. Um, yeah, so here I have my graphic styles panel. I'll click on this icon here that looks like a piece of paper kind of folded in the corner. And then here it creates a new style. So I'll double click and I'll call this motion one. So the widget initially, the graphic style name is motion one. Um, so it's just easy to, to name these like motion and then a number. Um, so I'll click on this second image, create a new graphic style and I'll call this motion two. Click on this third image, create a new graphic style, call this motion three. Uh, click on this fourth image, create a new graphic style, call this motion four. Click on this one here, create a new graphic style and call this motion five. Okay, so there are my graphic styles. Um, each of these elements have, has a graphic style assigned to it. So now I'll go into the widget, the Muse Motion 2 widget, and I'll close my graphics panel here. And I'll go into the widget options. And here we can see that the graphic style name is Motion 1, and it's the first instance instance of this widget. So we'll leave it at instance uh, 1, instance number 1. Uh, and here we want to translate on the X axis. Uh, so to do that, we just click on Translate X. We click on Enable Translate X, and we want to start the animation from, so it comes in from the left, and it fades in. So uh, when we set the from option here, we can set the auto alpha so that it uh, comes in at zero visibility, and that's what auto alpha, auto alpha means. It means that it's going to start at a zero, zero visibility, and then it's going to come into full visibility. So it's going to have this nice fade in transition, which is what we want so that it looks like a really smooth animation. And then for the Translate X, um, you can go as high as you want with this. I'll just say negative uh, 500 because um, I think that's plenty of space for it to be on the left and then come in. So if it's coming in from the left to the right, you want to have a negative number initially so that it starts off of the browser window and then comes in and uh, comes into place. And because we set it from the from, it's going to come from negative 500 pixels and it's going to translate to the right on the X, on the X axis. And for the duration, we can leave it at uh, two there. For the easing option, we can play with this. Um, but for now, I'll leave it there on power one. That looks good. Or I'll say expo. We'll say expo for all of these because I like the, the expo easing. And I think that's what I used for the first one. Uh, but you can play with this and see what um, what easing options you'd like. OK, so that was the first one. So now if I go to file, Oh, uh, one other thing I didn't do. Um, I want to trigger these effects on scroll. So for the select animation start, we want to say on scroll. OK. And then I'll go to file, uh, preview page and browser. And there it is. And because we have this on scroll offset at 100, um, it starts immediately. So I'm actually going to say 50 for the on scroll offset from the top. And I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And then as I scroll, there the element comes in. So as we can see, it was this very smooth um, animation when it comes in, and that looks really nice. All right, so there we have that one. So for the other ones, what I'm going to do is hit Command C and copy this first one. And for this one, all, all I'm going to do is change the graphic style name to 2 and the instance number to 2. And then translate X, instead of negative 500, I'm going to say 500. Um, because if the element is on the right, because if the element is on the right, it needs to be 500 more pixels to the right so that it can come in from the right to the left. Okay, so it's going to come in from 500 pixels to the right and then land in the position that it's in now. Okay, so there we have the options and that's all we have to do. Um, and then everything else is the same because we just copied it from this first one. So I'll just copy this first one again, or I'll just hit Command V to paste because we already had it copied. And here, uh, we don't have to change anything because it's on the left again. So I'll just change this to three and three. And we don't have to change any of the widget options because it's already coming in at negative 500. Uh, for the fourth one, I'm going to copy the second one here because the fourth one and the second one are, are the same because they're on the right. Um, so I'll just change this to four, instance number four and motion four. And then I'll copy this third one here because the third and the fifth one are the same. Um, 
because they're coming in from the left. So I'll just say five. For the instance number and the graphic style name, I'll say five as well. All right, so that's it for the motion or the animation. So I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And as I scroll, we have the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. So yeah, it looks really good. I really like those effects. Um, and that's basically it for that one. Uh, there was a few other things that I did. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is add the particles.js widget. Um, there was a new update on it, so it has a new widget interface. Uh, so it's a lot easier to navigate through the uh, widget options. So I'll go to my library panel. I'll type in particles.js, and here I have the particles.js widget 1.2, and I'll bring that in there. And then I'll send it to the back, arrange send to back, because I want it to be uh, behind everything. And then I'll stretch to the browser width. So here in resize, I'll say stretch to browser width. Okay, and I'll fix it, or I'll pin it to the top of the browser so it stays fixed. And I'll go into the widget options and I'll say 1000. Okay, and this just makes sure, yeah, make sure that if the browser is really big, um, that it fits the entire browser. All right, and the back, background is transparent. That looks good for the particles. Um, this all looks good. I wanna change the particle color to white. And I wanna leave the particle shape circle. That looks good. Um, opacity, we're not gonna change opacity. The line link, um, I want it to be white as well. And for interactivity, um, I don't want interactivity on hover. And uh, I think that's it. And for the movement, I want it to be a little bit slower. So I'll change the move speed to three. And I believe that's it. And I don't want uh, interactivity on click. So I'll, I'll uncheck that as well. Okay, so now I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And we have the particles.js. Um, we do want to make this image here stretch to browser width. So it covers the entire browser. So I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And there we have the particles.js. And we have those nice animations with the Muse Motion 2 widget. All right, looks good. So the next thing I wanna do is add the responsive side menu widget. So I'll go to my library panel and I'll type in responsive and here I'll bring in the responsive side menu with icons. So I'll click, hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. All right, I'll bring this down here and I'll go into the widget options just like so. And for the trigger color, I'll set it to this color here, trigger co color on hover. Um, say white and trigger selected color we'll leave it white uh, text color we'll say white um, text color on hover we'll say kind of this lighter blue here background color we'll say this blue and menu item hover color we'll leave it at white all right so that looks good um, I think that's all I have to do for now so I'll go to file preview page and browser and there we have the menu, uh, not exactly what I was looking for, so we'll just play with these colors a little bit. Trigger color, yep, we'll change it to white. All right, so I'll go to File, Preview Page and Browser. All right, so there's our menu, uh, looks good. We have the different colors there, and great. So we have the menu done. Um, we added the particles.js and the scroll effects with the Muse Motion 2 widget. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do, uh, we've assigned all the colors. Um, the next thing I wanna do is add anchor points to this website so that we can link the menu items to the anchor points. Uh, so here in the left, we have the anchor point uh, option in the left toolbar. So I'll click on this six times because I want uh, six different anchor points. So I'll click one, two, three, four, five, and six. And here I have uh, six anchor points on my cursor. So the first one I'll click. I'll call this home. The second one I'll click, I'll call this anchor two. The third one right here, I'll call this anchor three. The fourth one, I'll call this anchor four. And the fifth one here, I'll call this anchor five. And the sixth one here, I'll call this anchor six. All right, perfect. And what I'll wanna do here is go to my layers panel and click the drop down. And I want to select all of these anchors that I've just added. And I want to align to the content area, which is the entire website. And I want to want to say align to center here. Okay. And the other thing I'm going to do, 
I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to select every anchor except the home anchor. And I'm going to go to align, align to selection and distribute the spacing uh, vertically so that the spacing between these different sections are even and they're equal so that it has a consistent feeling when scrolling to those different anchor points. And then I'll zoom in and I'll bring the home anchor point all the way to the top. Okay, so that looks good. Um, now the next thing I wanna do, oh, let's make sure that it's all the way there at the zero point. Okay, so we have all our anchors on the website. So now I'll go to the responsive side menu widget and here for the menu items, I'll click here. So here in the select amount of menu items, I want uh, six menu items. And then here for the, uh, the menu item text, I'll say home. And then here it's gonna, the anchor name is home and then for the menu item two i believe it's easy login or no do more okay and then anchor two we can leave it like that um, so we have do more easy login multiple accounts okay so for number two we have uh, multiple accounts yeah or no easy login and then here for four, we have multiple accounts because the home page is one, so here it's four. Um, and then we have easy access and touch enabled. Okay, so I'll go to my menu items. I'll say here, menu item five, easy access and touch enabled. Okay, and then for the icons, I'm just gonna select maybe some random um, some random icons here. Okay, so I've selected the icons there. Uh, so now if I go to File, Preview Page in Browser, and I go to the menu, I click on the sections, it brings us to those sections, and we have the scroll effects as well. All right, looks good. Uh, so the next thing I wanna do is maybe add some easing to the scrolling. So I'll just go to the scrolling option here and we'll make the speed a thousand, make it a little bit slower. And for the scroll to easing, I'll say ease in quad. And that might be a nice effect. All right, so I'll go to file preview page in browser. Go to the menu and just do something like that. Looks good. And it has kind of a smoother feel to it when I scroll to it. All right, perfect. And here I'll add the word menu. Um, and one thing you can do with the responsive side menu is you can create a 60 by 60 uh, square. And yeah, something like that. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Or yeah, I'll say 60. Uh, because that's how big that uh, trigger is in the, in the left hand corner. Um, so you can use it as a reference and, and place things up here in the top bar. Um, so I'll just create some text and I'll just say menu. Okay, and then I'll say uh, the Carme font, and we'll say 18, or maybe 24, and I'll make it white there. All right, looks good. And there's that. So I just want to line it up with this box here and pin it to the upper left. Okay, so there we have the word menu. Um, so if I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, we have the word menu and the menu here, and that looks nice. Uh, so the last thing I'll do here is place in the social media icons. So I can actually go to my library panel and I'll type in font awesome and I'll bring in the font awesome icons with hover. Okay, and then here I'll just dial this a little bit. I want the icon size to be 32, the initial color to be white, and then I don't want a border, so for the border width, I'll just say zero. The hover color, I'll say um, this blue here. Okay, and then for the icon, I want this to be the uh, Twitter icon. So I'll just scroll down uh, to Twitter right here. And then I'll make this box a little bit smaller here. Doesn't need, need, doesn't need to be so big, so I'll say 40 by 40. And didn't like what that just did there, so yeah. yeah. 
All right, so we just make that box a little bit smaller. Yeah, let me bring it over here and make it 40 by 40. All right, looks good. And then I'll center that in the center, the icon in the center, and perfect. Okay, so I'll hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And I'll place this up here at the top. And here for the font, I'll say Facebook. Okay. So we have Facebook. Then I'll paste one more time. And then we have Instagram. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so there we have our social media icons. And let me just go to align and distribute horizontally. Looks good. And I'll pin to the upper right there of the website. So I'll go to file, preview page, and browser. And there are my social media icons. Um, it has a border to it. Ah, uh, yes, that's because here in the oh, on hover border, we have to set this to zero as well. And I'll go in here and set this to zero. And I'll go in here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'll go in here and set this to zero as well. Just like that. All right, so there we don't have any hover over the icons. So I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And we have the icons there, and then we can link them to our social media, or uh, yeah, to any social media uh, you might have. All right, so that looks good. Um, I scroll down, we have the scroll effects, and we just have this nice uh, website here. Looks nice, and I wanna add kind of a white border right here to kind of separate this section from um, this bottom section. So I'll click on the image, I'll go to stroke, and I'll add a stroke of three. We'll make it white, and I'll un unconstrain the stroke so that we can take the stroke off the top, the left, and the right. So we just have that stroke at the bottom, and perfect. So I'll scroll up, and it looks nice. Yeah, I just wanted kind of a separation between this top image and uh, the rest of the section. I'll bring this down a little bit, just like that. All right, looks good. So I'm actually gonna save the site. Um, I'm liking the way it's looking. And yeah, so that's it for the homepage here on the desktop. Um, we used the Muse Motion 2 widget for animating these different images in. Um, we used the particles.js widget for the particles in the background. Um, we used the responsive side menu widget for the, for the menu. And um, we also use the Font Awesome uh, widget for these icons here. And you can install Font Awesome as an icon um, or as a font. And I'll probably go over that in another video tutorial. Um, and we also use the Font Smoother widget to get these fonts uh, looking really nice. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to probably move through this fairly quickly, um, is the responsive version of this website. Now, these scroll effects, they, they work really well on desktop. Um, I don't recommend too many scroll effects on mobile. Um, and if you were using kind of, let's say, adaptive design, it might work a little bit better adding these scroll effects. Um, but when you transition these elements onto a mobile device and they have the scroll effects applied to them, um, sometimes it doesn't work that well. You can kind of get it to work. I wouldn't maybe recommend uh, having that transition there in the responsive design and kind of adding these scroll effects. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just show you how to create a mobile site without the scroll effects. Um, because usually, too, when someone's on a mobile device, they don't want to have all this kind of crazy stuff happening. Um, so we're going to add a breakpoint. So I'll right click and I'll click Add Breakpoint. And I'll create a breakpoint at 320 uh, because it's for the iPhone 5S. Uh, so as we can see, everything kind of goes out of whack. Um, so I'll just go back into the 960 breakpoint. And what I want to do here is hide all of these elements um, on the other breakpoints, just the images here and these widgets. I wanna hide them on the other breakpoints. Um, so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say hide and other breakpoints. So if I go back into here, all we have is the text 
and the particles.js widget and we didn't hide this top one here. So I'll say right click, hide and other breakpoints. All right, so all we have to do here is kind of resize everything. So I'm gonna resize um, this text here. I'm gonna say, go to the text option and I'm gonna say 14. And for these ones here, the, the titles, I'm gonna say maybe 24 and that looks good. And then I'm gonna have to shrink this text down a little bit and I might delete some of the text because it's a lot of text. So I'll just delete some text for each of these. And just something like that. Okay. And I'll kind of shrink this down a little bit like so. Okay. Just like that. And yeah, let's line these up a little bit. So I might not make this perfect just to save, save some time in this video tutorial, but I just want to kind of showcase um, making this responsive. Okay. Yeah, normally I'd play more with the spacing and make sure it's, you know, really nice. All right, so something like that. All right, so what we want to do here is copy these images onto the mobile. Um, that way it's, it's a separate instance and it's not using the properties from the 960 version of the website. So I just copied those images and I'll hit Command V to paste. And now we have kind of different versions of these images. And the next thing I can do here is um, make sure that the graphic styles aren't applied and they're not, or they are actually. So let me select all of these elements and say none for the graphic styles because we don't want any inheritance from the 960 uh, version of the website. We just want these to kind of stand alone so that they're not trying to scroll or do any type of animation, um, which could make the responsive site look um, not that great. Okay, so we have that there. And we have this one here, all right, and this one here. And what's great, when I copied in those images, it already became responsive, so the images became smaller, um, which is really great. And then for these anchor points here, I'm gonna say align to content area and then center it, okay? And this menu, I'll make a little bit bigger there. We can leave these here. Um, just like that. Okay, and I do want to make this here smaller, so I'll make it maybe 36 and I'll center it here. Yeah, let me center it right there. I'll make it a little bit bigger, maybe 48 and just like that. All right, center it there. Looks good. Place it up a little bit higher and align center. Yeah, and I'll leave the social media icons in this menu button here as well. Um, so the one thing that I removed from this, um, this the 960 version of the website or the desktop version is I removed the responsive side menu um, and we don't need to remove it. We can actually show this in other breakpoints uh, because the menu is responsive and it'll work on all breakpoints. All right, so that's it. So we've designed the, um, the mobile version and the other thing I want to make sure is that these anchor points um, are in a good place for the mobile site as well. Okay, anchor four, oh, that has to go quite a ways down. Anchor five and anchor six. Okay, so let me zoom out. And yeah, the spacing is a bit off. So what I can do here is group all of these elements I'll right click and uh, here I'll select these elements here minus the particles.js. I'll say group, 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 and group, and group. Then I'll select them and I'll go to align, align to selection, distribute spacing vertically, and then I'll select the anchor points as well. 
go to align, distribute spacing vertically. So everything is positioned vertically evenly. All right, so that's it for the mobile. So if I go to file, preview page in browser, and we have the desktop version here. Oh, and the other thing, if you notice, we have multiple versions here of the image, and that is because we did not hide, um, here, let me ungroup these. We didn't hide the mobile um, images on other breakpoints. Okay. So I'll just select these here and I'll right click and say hide in other breakpoints. All right, looks good. So I'll go to file preview page in browser and perfect. So there we have the desktop version, those nice scroll effects. Looks good. Uh, if we notice that this text goes over the, the menu, um, to change that, we can, we can just right click on the responsive side menu, arrange and bring to front. And then here, looks like it did something. Oh no, looks good. Um, so I'll go to file, preview page in browser. Okay, I'll scroll up. And the menu is in front of everything. And our icons need to break, be brought to the front as well. Arrange, bring to front. So I'll go to file, preview page in browser. And there we have it, perfect menu. And we have the scroll effects. So let me do that one more time. I'll hit refresh. And we have these nice scroll effects uh, for those images there. Okay, and because I can't make this browser size uh, 320, I can't really see how it's gonna look on the mobile. So I'll actually copy this, um, this URL up here. I'll go to Safari and I'll hit Command V and paste and hit enter. And here I'm already in responsive mode. Um, again, we did that by going to develop and then uh, enter responsive mode up here. So here I'll just click on iPhone 5S and looks good. I can see how it's gonna look on my iPhone 5S. All right, cause it has the breakpoint 320. And there's the menu. You can see it scrolls down to those sections. All right, looks great. Perfect. All right. Yeah, looks good. And touch enabled. All right, good. And I'll go back home. All right, perfect. So that's it for this video tutorial. Um, I just wanted to showcase um, a few different widgets and I did have a lot of fun creating this website and kind of showing you this responsive feature in Safari and it's a great way to test uh, your responsive website in Adobe Muse and it has really great break breakpoints there for different devices. Um, it tells you the size of the device and 320 is the width. So the first number here is the width. Um, so 4S is 320, 5S, 320, 6S is 375, the width. Um, yeah, the width and uh, 6S Plus is 414. iPad mini is 1024. iPad Air 1024. Yeah, it's 1024. Um, iPad Pro is 13, 1366. And then we have 800 by 600. Um, 1366 by 768 and 1920 by 1080. Yeah, this one here is 1366 by 768 and 1920 by 1080. All right, so we can see how the website will look on those different uh, breakpoints there. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial. Um, I'll go back into Chrome here. Uh, to get access to these widgets, you simply go to museforyoushop.com. And then here you can click on the pop-up here. And here you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Or if you'd like to use PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, if you'd like to purchase the widgets individually, they're here. Uh, we have the Muse Motion widget. Uh, we have the responsive side menu widget and the, uh, let's see, the particles.js widget and the font awesome for Adobe Muse widget. And I think there was one more, the font smoother. Yep, the font smoother widget right here. All right, and if you'd like to purchase individually, um, here I'll click on the Muse Motion 2 widget and then click Add to Cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. And also below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial.
Thank you.